commissioning a commercial rooftop package unit, tips that you need to know. Today you're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and we're going to be going over tips that you may need to know if you're commissioning a commercial rooftop package unit so that you don't make as many mistakes as I did when I first started doing HVAC and didn't have a clue. So, hope you're ready to learn. This is a five ton, 230 volt, three phase package unit. It can be mounted on the ground or it can be mounted on the roof. When it's mounted on the roof, you have to take out these panels. This is a bottom panel, right? And then you have to take out this panel. This is a bottom panel that opens up the supply duct, okay? This is the supply duct. And this is the return duct, okay? You can see the filters. It pulls air across the filters, into the coil, through the blower, back through here, across the heat exchanger, and down into the supply duct. Whenever it's mounted on a roof, you have to take out the bottom panel, bottom discharge panel. It can be mounted on the ground as well. And if it was mounted on the ground, you would hook ducts to the return panel and to the supply panel. So if it was mounted on the ground, we would take this return side panel off, this return side panel off, and this supply side panel off. Make sure you know that information before you install a rooftop package unit, because if you leave these panels on, you're going to be recirculating the unit inside this package system, and you're probably gonna lock out. Compressor lockout, something like that. This right here is a drain trap, and this keeps the water from being sucked back in to the unit. If you do not install a trap on your drain, you will have water probably staying inside the pan and leaking down through the duct. And if you ever get a call, hey, there's water leaking inside the building and you've got commercial rooftop units, either your drain stopped up or no one installed a trap. Okay. So this is 230 volt three phase. That means we got three legs of power, right? You on startup, you are going to check out the direction of the fan, okay? And usually there's an arrow on here and you'll be able to see that arrow and you'll be able to look at the wheel. In this particular wheel setup, it looks like it's gonna turn this direction, okay? So it's gonna turn counterclockwise. If it doesn't and it turns the wrong direction on startup, what you're going to do is you're gonna switch two of these legs. So you're gonna take an Allen tool, you're gonna to loosen the screw on the contactor, and you're gonna take this line voltage and you're gonna swap one of these two. If you wanna learn more, I'm gonna put a video in the link in the description that talks about three phase power in the video, and it's gonna show you what happens when you have the three phase power reversed and you need to switch it. And I'm gonna, in the video, I show you how to switch it. Okay, next, this is the gas valve. If you have a manometer, good. You need to set the gas pressure whenever you start up the gas on a package unit like this. It needs to be three and a half inches of water column. If you don't know how to set gas pressure, I'm gonna put a video on the link in the description that shows you how to set gas pressure using a manometer. If you don't have a manometer, get a manometer. Now, low voltage wiring. You see how it says Y1 and Y2, W1 and W2? You need to make sure you know if this is a single stage or a two stage unit. If it's two stage, you need a two stage thermostat and you need to hook up Y2. How do we figure out if it's two stage? Well, if it's two stage, you usually have two compressors. I only have one compressor, but scroll compressors can be two stage. That means there'd be a solenoid on the other side of this compressor. Now there's not one, and usually on commercial units, you have another compressor, okay? You usually have two circuits. What I mean by two circuits, that means um, usually there is a bigger coil with two circuits. That means two suction lines into the evaporator, and you've got two liquid lines between the evaporator and the condenser. So we don't have two circuits, we only have one circuit. So we got one single compressor, so single stage cooling, and then we've got one gas valve, and we've got 
a single stage gas valve. So, because there's not a high and there's not a low, we've got a pilot valve and a main valve. We've got a pilot valve to open the pilot and to send gas through the pilot tube to the pilot assembly. And then we've got a main valve which opens this main valve and sends gas to the burners. So it's single stage gas, single stage cooling. So that means we're not gonna use W2, we're not gonna use Y2. Now, I'm gonna turn the power on. We're gonna see what direction that blower wheel spins. Ah, so if you saw that, it's spinning the right way. Good deal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take and put this side panel back on. I am your best friend. This should be your best friend too. This is the manual. If you read this installation manual, you will learn a lot of information about the piece of equipment that you are installing. Like duct covers. Units are shipped with all air duct openings covered. For side duct applications, remove and discard supply and return air duct covers. For bottom duct applications, remove the side supply and air duct cover to gain access to the bottom supply air knockout panel. So we talked about that in the first of the video, but if you open up, look at the first few pages, this is what you're gonna see. You can learn about the curb. So check out the curb. You can look at the supply and the return openings and actually see the dimensions and the size. See this right here? This is a manual outdoor air damper. And this is something you definitely need and I'm gonna to talk to you about why. We do not have that right now installed because we're actually having that shipped to us. We got the unit before we got the outdoor air damper. So I'm gonna come back up here and install it right here. But I'm gonna to talk to you about why it's so important. The number one problem I find in the HVAC field is airflow problems. We're installing new equipment, but we're not installing new duct work. And when you put a new piece of equipment on an old duct system, usually the duct system is undersized. So you have performance issues, you have efficiency issues, and you don't want airflow problems. So installing that outside air damper and having some outside air, having more return means having more supply. So if I don't have enough return, and I can install that outdoor air damper and then I can supply my unit with the right amount of airflow because that outdoor air damper makes up the rest of the return that I needed, then boom. And I've actually had a system where you have a VFD, right? You have a variable frequency drive that controls the indoor fan motor. And I had a system one time where we had the outdoor air shut off, right? Same size unit we installed, but we had the outdoor air damper shut off and I was able to open it up and hear a change in the airflow and then my VFD did not fault out and shut the unit off because the indoor fan was getting too hot because there wasn't enough airflow. So that's an example for you. You want to learn more about commercial rooftop package units? I've got a video that I will put down in the link in the description for you. This is a ZE060. It's a 60,000 BTU, five ton unit. It's three phase, you see 230 and then three. So it is three phase. The previous existing unit that we replaced, it was a ZF60. And York offered a direct replacement which looks the exact same. This is the ZE. And we didn't require a curb adapter. So that was nice. That saved us some money and saved the customer some money. Whenever you go to look at a commercial unit and you're trying to figure out what all you need to replace it, you may need a curb adapter. So let me talk about that. So this unit is sitting on an existing curb and all I had to do was give the model and serial number to the distributor and they were able to tell me, hey, it doesn't need a curb. Now it's not always the case. And this existing unit can replace a couple other models. Now this unit right here is sitting on a curb adapter and this is the existing curb right here and before this unit was installed you would have to come out here get a tape measure and measure from one end of the curb to there and one end of the curb to there get those dimensions then the existing unit you would need to come to the supply panel to take it off come to the return panel take it off go down inside and measure the return opening and the supply opening and then you need to draw it out 
and then put a circle where the supply and the return is and then put your measurements there. You would also need to see what the power supply was. If the power supply is three phase and if it's 230 volt or if it's 460 volt. Also, one more thing, you would need to find the clear spot where the crane could pull up and then you would need to measure the height of the roof and how far over the unit is. So if it's 20 foot high and it's 20 foot over, you need to know that so you can tell the crane driver and they can give you a price and they can know what crane they'll need to use and if they have a couple cranes choices or options and then they'll need to be able to figure out, well, if they can do it or not. Hope you enjoyed today's video about commissioning a rooftop package unit and also tips for pricing out a commercial rooftop package unit. Hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you did learn something, what it was. If you don't have any questions, that's okay. Let me know who you are and where you're from. And if you need help, definitely click the join button. Become a member and let me know in the comments. If you joined, I'll give you my email and that'll lead to contact with me. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.